Hello YouTube, uh, today we're going to be working on the competition model and uh, this is pretty much the biological applications of multivariable calculus and um, we're pretty much going to be doing kind of like um, two species competing for resources and seeing how they are inter interdependent on one another competing for the same prey for example um, or a resource in general. So we're going to find the survival rates, these, this is a rate, these two um, differentiable equations are rates, um, but keep in mind that N1 and N2 are the population of each species. So as shown here at a certain time. Okay, what you should recognize with this, um, well in biology you're used to something kind of like this, right? You logistic growth and then you reach a carrying capacity. Um, so in math it looks something like this. This is logistic growth. Um, so you have a population that's starting and then it grows really, 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 really fast and then it slowly s settles off. Um, and that could be probably due to um, resources or prey um, in this example. So what's that dotted line or that dashed line represent? That represents the carrying capacity and it's going to be represented as K. So this is the equation for basic um, logistic growth. Now we're dealing with two species now. So keep in mind that the simplicity of this um, is tied into um, the separable equations here. So notice here that there's K's, right? What do those K's represent? The carrying capacity. Now that's going to be key for the next portion. Um, but first, let's um, deal with this problem here, this first case we have. Um, and we'll deal with the graphs later, but let's, let's, uh, let's approach those problems right now. So just color coding them for later because I'm going to have to graph them. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set the equations equal to zero. Now why would we do that? Well that's to find the equilibrium points or the critical points or the intercepts of the graph used for later. Um, so if you do that um, and you solve um, for n1 equals zero for example for the first one and how I got that is if I simplified this and pretend this was like x right here and this was like x minus one for example when you set an equation equal to zero um, you could get x equals zero and x equals one. So using that same application, you can do the same thing for getting n equals um, zero here. So I just set that portion equal to zero. So now I got to set the inside equal to zero. And what I did was I brought the one over and then divided by a negative one to get rid of all the negatives. Um, so that's how I got this part here. So then you could find the intercepts. Um, that's just pretty much the math portion. Um, so for that, so you plug in n equals 1, n1 one equals 0 um, into the equation, and you would get the first x-intercept, or the first intercept to be um, 50, 0. And then um, this one would be more complicated. You could substitute this in here to get 0, and then you'd have to solve for this, and then you would get uh, the second equation would be 0, 167 because it's 50 times 1 divided by 0.3 you'd get your n2 and this is representing your n2 um, yeah okay so those are the intercepts and now we're gonna do the same thing like we did for the next one. Oh, key important information uh, we'll get that back to that in a second but this is not gonna be important uh, for later it's gonna be considered trivial or negligible because um, for the graph portion, but it did help us for solving for the intercepts down below. Um, okay, so now let's move on to the next one. So I did the same thing. I treated um, these as separate equations, just like I did above and solved. I um, mean, you'd get these two equations here. And same thing, you plug N2 into this equation, and then you can figure out what the value of N1 would be, and you can calculate the intercepts. Um, same thing, if you want the other intercept, you plug N2 into this equation. Um, so we would have 0, 30 and 37.5, 0. I did these separately on a calculator just to save time. Um, you can check my math, I guess. But um, So there's that. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be graphing these. Notice how these are actually lines. They're an equation of lines. Keep that in mind. They're lines. Um, 
So how you can see that better is if you treated n1, for example, as x, and n2, for example, as y. Then you can start to see it more clearly. Um, but if you simply plot the intercepts, um, you can create that line simply. So that's how we're forming this, this line um, simpler, because you just literally connect the dots between the two points um, to represent your line. So now let's take a look at the graph. Okay, so this graph kind of looks complicated, but right now just ignore these arrows, um, or the directional field or vector field. Um, so right now we're just going to focus on the um, intercepts that we plotted, or that we figured out from the equation here. So if you plot those intercepts, and then you form a line, you can show the relationship of each species. So there's species 1, the green one is color-coded, and then let's look at species 2. There. Okay. So what do these represent here? Um, pretty much this is going towards zero, right? Um, so that means at that point in time, both species pretty much will be extinct. Um, this is pretty much showing how uh, species 2 will die off first um, compared to species 1. So that's pretty much what we're trying to determine here, which species will survive and that is this species here, which is species... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, this one died first, so that means species 1 will survive. Okay, hope that, hope that makes sense. So see how this one goes to 0 first? That means it's going to die first. This one goes to 0 second, so it's going to survive longer. Um, now let's look at this, I guess, um, in terms of carrying capacity and stuff with that logistic growth, but before we do that, um, now let's pay attention to the lines here, or the vector field. So what these represent, if, it, if you start at this point, for example, this is an initial condition, uh, if you follow the lines, it's mostly going to go to this point here, pretty much from anywhere. It's kind of leading in this direction, right? Even from over here. Um, but what, what, are those initial conditions what do those initial conditions represent? Those represent the number of population of those species at that certain time. So if we start with 150 of species 1 and 25 of species 2, or vice versa, whatever, um, the trend of those, that, those two populations is going to eventually go um, to here. So that's pretty much what it means mathematically. So don't think of them, I guess, as initial conditions. Think of them as, okay, there's this many um, you know, predators and this many prey or whatever, or this many of species one, this many of species two, and what's going to happen over time due to the limited resource as described in the, differentiable, in the systems of differentiable equations. Um, so now let's talk about, oh, remember this is the same thing, it's trivial. Um, so now let's talk about the carrying capacity. So in dealing with uh, the carrying capacity, this can be very helpful um, in finding which species will become extinct first or decline over time, or which one would survive and increase over time. So if you use the numbers that represent the constants, or the um, carrying capacity here, notice how it's 50 and 30, if you plug them in to the opposite equation, um, you can, or into the equations, you can figure out which one will survive and which one would, would go out first. So let's do that. So let's deal with the second equation first, which is species 2. Um, if you plug in 50 uh, for k1 into this portion here, you'll get something like this. So you get 40 over 30 because 80% of 50 is 40, so 0.8 times 50. Yeah, okay. So if you just look at this portion here, um, notice how this is greater than 1. So if you're subtracting a number that's, that's greater than 1 from a, small, from a number that would be less than 1, so if you had, say, 1, for example, minus, I guess, 4 thirds, you'd get a negative number, right? So what does that ne negative number represent? That means if this is negative, then the species 2 will decline towards extinction. Now let's look when we plug in the second carrying capacity into the other differential equation. Um, if you plug that in you'd get 0.3 times 30 over 50 which is less than 1. So if you start, subtract a number that's say 1 for example, and no it doesn't even matter, just say 2, 
um, minus a number less than 1, say 1 half, you'd still have a positive number. So, if the number is positive, since this is positive, then species 1, species 1, will continue to increase. And that's shown how this one, serve, or how species 2 here declined towards extinction, that's shown here, so pretty much um, this species will increase or survive longer, pretty much survive. Um, so yeah, that is the applications of separable, or of systems of differential equations um, involving rates um, and a population for competition of a resource. So, I hope that helped. And remember that it all goes back to the basic concepts of logistic growth, carrying capacity, and simply um, using what you know from this basic graph um, to figure out which species will survive um, longer over time. Uh, good luck and keep studying.